Get ready for another video in Alex's garage. So today in the video, we're going to go over testing old gauges. You can see this is an image from the original uh, um, dashboard before we put on the, the wood trim. Uh, we took these, these gauges out and we did a little cleanup on them, but we haven't tested them until today. So let's go over how we tested the gauges and determine whether or not we want to put them back into the dash. So let's get started off with the tachometer. All right, so to test the uh, um, the tachometer, uh, we're hooking it onto another four-cylinder engine. In this case, this is a uh, 1979 Super Beetle, but um, it's very similar uh, to the way that you would install it inside the car. So as you see here, I got a red. The red lead is going to the battery power that gives me 12 volts DC. The yellow lead is going to signal. So to test the speedometer, um, it's a mechanical connection as opposed to an electrical connection. And the mechanical connection is a square shaft that goes in there. Now, obviously I don't, I'm not going to push the car and see if the speedometer works and I don't want to have to tear the shaft apart and, and figure out how to get that, that, uh, uh, that uh, connector in here or anything like that. So I'm going to find a real easy way to just confirm that the speedometer uh, turns, that there's freedom of motion, and that it will actually register, um, and that and that it's you know it's in good shape. These are barn fine uh, cars, and a lot of these gauges are all rusted up, and you just want to make sure everything's working. So just to validate, this is not about setting the accuracy because the accuracy of a speedometer is is um, involved in gear ratios and tire sizes and all kinds of things. So it's a whole nother video. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is just how to really quick confirm that the speedometer that you have in your barn find that you're trying to restore uh, will function. Now, um, the center of that shaft on these uh, that goes into the, the speedometer is a, is a square shaft. And so what I got here is a couple of driver bits. These are uh, R1 and R2. Uh, let's see if I can get to the clean part. Here we go. It's R1 and R2 square driver bits. Uh, the R2 fits the best. It's a little bit bigger of the two. Uh, the R1 will work if that's all you've got. Um, this one I'm not going to use because it doesn't fit in the chuck of my drill. But this one here is an R2 that does fit into the chuck of my drill. And I'm going to show you real quick um, how to confirm that your speedometer is working. All right, so we got the, uh, the R2 square driver bit in here. And I've, I've set the uh, uh, the driver, my, my, my driver bit here, my, uh, my little cordless drill to run backwards. Like you're going to loosen a screw, right? So you put it backwards, right? And then all you have to do is put this into the back and it will, it'll click right in. You can see right there, it clicks right in. And you don't have to push it too hard. You just need to engage it into the gears and then run it backwards. And you'll see the speedometer responding. What you're looking for is uh, any kind of jumping, and uh, you want to see if the uh, the trip meter is actually moving. You can see here it's advancing at 25 miles an hour with your driver bit. Really easy way to test your speedometer. So I'm satisfied that this speedometer works, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it into the into the dash. Moving on. All right, so testing the fuel gauge. The fuel gauge, unlike the other gauges uh, in the dash on the 77, 
is, is electronic. Um, it uses electrical signal that comes from the fuel sending unit, uh, which is essentially just a rheostat. It sends a 12 volt message to this gauge um, and uh, based on how much fuel is in there. So if the fuel is full, then the gauge will send a full 12 volt circuit in and it will go all the way up to full. So how am I going to test this, right? Well, it's just plus and minus, right? Uh, what I got here is a, um, I'm at the Volkswagen again. Got my uh, VOM set up uh, on the battery and you can see I've got, uh, I've got 12 volts here. 12.7, it's about right, that you'd expect out of a battery that's sitting idle. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in and we're going to watch to see that the fuel gauge responds to a 12 volt signal. And if that's good, then we're, we'll be happy that, uh, that uh, this gauge is functioning and we can put it into the dash. Here we go. There you go. It is a full tank. Yay. All right, so this is a good gauge and we're gonna go ahead and put this in a dash too. Notice how it's uh, taking a little while for that, that magnet in there to, uh, to bleed off. Uh, so if you ever get like a major dump of fuel, it'll take forever for you to know it. <laughs> um, but anyway, this is a good gauge. Let's put it in the dash. All right, so in this test, we're going to test the temperature sensor gauge. This is just a hot or cold kind of gauge. It doesn't really tell you the actual temperature, but it'll tell you when you're getting hot. Um, and uh, just like the, the fuel gauge, this is an electronic sensor that um, when you give it a full 12 volts, it'll go from cold to hot. To the fuel gauge it went from empty to full. Um, and so what I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to demonstrate um, how the actual temperature sensor works. This uh, um, is very much like a rheostat. It uh, works the other way. It creates a resistance um, as the temperature goes up. Um, I'm sorry, it creates resistance as the temperature goes down and it re reduces the resistance so that more electricity can go through once it gets hot. Um, so right now, I just, I just pulled this out of the fridge. Um, I've made this little rig here so that I can put it on a, um, a coffee cup and I'm gonna measure the temperature of that coffee cup and we're gonna watch the resistance build up with an ohmmeter here real quick. All right, so here's the coffee cup. I'm going to put this in here and we're going to watch this um, ohmmeter change. So I'm going to put the temperature in here, or the, the sensor. This is my, my meat thermometer. Um, all right, so I'm going to put the green on the, the signal and red will be on the ground in this case. You can see 1300 ohms. It's uh, very close to a straight circuit because it's very cold. This is right out of the freezer. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in and we'll watch this as the resistance changes. See how the, the ohm, uh, the resistance is changing on the ohmmeter? The temperature is 185 degrees. And it's going up, going going down. It's actually going down. So more electricity can go through it when it gets hotter. That's how um, the temperature sensor works. Uh, and as soon as that kind of levels off, you can see it's at 120 right now, 116. And I think that's about where it's going to level off, right about at 100. Still ticking. So um, this shows you how the the ohmmeter will will um, will react. Let's go ahead and set this up so that we can watch the temperature, um, how it is affected. These are this is uh, 12 volts from uh, the car battery here, and uh, we'll show how the resistance um, works uh, and how the temperature gauge reacts to that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this ohmmeter off. Okay, I'm going to put, put the ground on the ground. And 
and I'm going to connect. Okay, I got this going in the right direction. It'll create a circuit. It's going the other way. We'll go from green. And you'll be able to watch as the temperature changes. Okay, so our temperature is 174, which if you're driving a car, that's actually not too bad. If it gets over 200, then uh, uh, then it would get up to the hot. So this actually shows that the temperature sensor is kind of doing what it's supposed to be doing. And um, uh, I think what I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to put it right here so that we can watch that. And I'll speed up the, the video from here. We'll watch the temperature as the, as the water cools. We'll watch the temperature drop down. All right, we'll see if we can drop this temperature by dropping some ice in here. One thirty six, one twenty two, you can see it dropping significantly. All right. Well, I'm going to call that a successful test. This gauge passes, it's going to get put into the dash. Moving on. All right, so. Last gauge that we're going to test here is the oil pressure gauge. You can see uh, on the MGB, this is 1977 MGB, it has a mechanical oil pressure gauge, not electric. So it is connected directly to an oil uh, tube that goes through the dash and goes into uh, the engine block right by um, where the the engine the oil comes out uh, right next to the um, uh, the main line that comes around to the oil filter. So what I've done here is I've taken the, uh, on the engine side, there is a, a braided um, hose, and I've replaced that. This is my old braided hose, um, and uh, in the dash, there's a uh, small copper tube that goes through the dash and connects in here, but it's the same connector, uh, the same connector. So what I've done here is I've connected this old pipe up to the back here, and uh, I'm going to just test to make sure that this oil pressure gauge does, in fact, um, register when I put oil pressure in there and so I'm gonna I'm gonna use uh, my little hand oil pump uh, just to manually pump some pressure into that pipe and see if it registers on on this gauge all right so I'm gonna see if I can rig this so that you can see the gauge respond let me see the gauge right there okay let's see if we can get some pressure in here Okay. Okay, you can see it rising. And then I let the oil out, you can see it dropping. So, I'm going to say that this gauge is fit for use. On to the next thing. All right, so there you have it. All the gauges have been tested, uh, confirmed that they're functioning, and they've been installed.
Um, in the next video, we're going to be installing the the wiring harness that goes with the uh, with the dash, um, and I'll I'll show you how to put all the lights and everything in there and connect it all up according to the wiring diagram. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to be notified when that video comes out. Uh, and if you have any comments about any of the uh, procedures I use for testing or have any questions, um, please leave your comments in the comment section um, and uh, like the videos. It always helps the algorithm when you like and subscribe. Uh, so thanks much. We'll see you, see you next video.